Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how I make my new favorite lunchtime snack, which is kind of a Greek or Mediterranean style cucumber salad with crunchy chickpeas. For this recipe, you'll need some red onion, some Persian cucumbers, tomato, I'm using grape tomatoes, chickpeas, feta cheese, and then some spices such as coriander, parsley, and fresh mint. So I'm going to start by chopping up all of my veggies and putting them in my Pyrex. This is great because it has an airtight lid that goes on top so I can just shake up the salad to mix everything really well and not have to worry about it spilling everywhere because when you can't see, that tends to happen pretty easily. Okay, so I have five Persian cucumbers. These are from Trader Joe's. They seem to be the best buy for your buck, so that's why I'm using these. And as I go along, I'll just kind of tell you my little tips and tricks as someone who can't see how I prepare my food without cutting myself. Knocking on wood, I, to this day, have never cut or hurt myself while making food, and I think that's because I take precautions and I prioritize my safety while I'm cooking. So. I have a cutting board that has high contrast to my countertop. As you may be able to tell, my counter is like a dark green-ish granite and my cutting board is a uh, light wood brown. And what this does is it helps me know where my workspace is versus the counter space. It helps me stay in one little section and it, yeah, it just kind of keeps things separate from the counter. And I'm just using a regular old serrated knife right now. Whenever I am making food or preparing food, cutting vegetables, whatever, I make sure that my hand is nowhere near the blade. If I'm going to try to find a spot that I want to cut, like right now where I'm going to cut the end of the cucumbers off, I always have my hand on top, so on the edge that isn't sharp at all, I place it where I feel it needs to go, so it's a little bit off the edge to get kind of that gross part off, and then just slice down. So I'll just do that really fast. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just slice these into thin little circles, bite-sized pieces to make it easier for eating. And I'm going to use that same tactic where I put my fingertip at the edge to feel how big of a piece I'm cutting. And then I place my hand over the top so it stays far from the blade. I know you might be thinking, why am I using Persian cucumbers? That just sounds fancy and unnecessary. I personally taste the difference in Persian versus regular cucumbers. Zach doesn't. I know some people do, some people don't. But I like these. They have a good flavor. They're a little more dense, so they're not as watery tasting, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to continue with the other of my cucumbers. actually felt the texture change as I got to the end of the cucumber and kind of realized that it went a little bad at the end, so we're not going to use that part. Some people ask me, you know, how do you tell if food is good or bad? And you don't necessarily have to see it to tell if something has gone bad or not. I know some people 
who have perfectly good eyesight only go based on smell. With this situation, I was able to tell by the texture just because I'm used to handling the vegetable as I'm cutting it. And so when I feel that there is a change, see even some of these are a little different in texture. So we'll just toss those aside. Maybe they're brown, maybe they're not, but I always prefer to be safe rather than sorry. All right, so my cucumbers are done. I'm going to clear off my cutting board and I'll be right back. So now I'm going to move on to my tomatoes. Like I said, I have personally chosen grape tomatoes for this recipe, but you can use whatever kind you want. These are also from Trader Joe's. They're already cleaned. So with these, I just have them. So I put a hand on either side and then kind of keep my finger over top the blade so I can kind of sense where that middle ground is. There's no set amount for each vegetable that goes in. I just kind of base it on either how much I have or how much I want. I'm not crazy about tomatoes, so I don't put a whole lot in. I obviously love cucumber and onion and the cheese, so I like to load up on that. I think that's enough tomato, personally, for my liking. So right now we have cucumber, some onion, and tomato in my little Pyrex right here. Now I'm going to work on the dressing for the salad so it can start to soak in it and get some of those flavors into the produce. Okay, so for the dressing, we have some lemon juice, some olive oil, some mint leaves, salt, and pepper. For those of you who might be wondering how I'm able to tell what spices I'm using, I personally have some usable eyesight, so I can see large print if it's in high contrast. So we actually found a spice rack from Bed Bath & Beyond. I will link it down below, but it comes with pre-labeled jars that are in large print actually, and are in high contrast. So those are the spices that I use. And then for the non-labeled spices that we also have, on hand, I have my Seeing AI app where I can scan either the barcode or the name on the spice to know what it is. For a lot of our spices, such as our salt and pepper, I know just based on the shape of the bottle what they are. So this one is salt and this one is pepper. They're very distinct in their shape. So it all depends on what I'm using as to which tactic I'll use. Here's an example of what the crushed mint label looks like uh, for those of you who may be wondering. And like I said, I will link the spice rack down below as well as a link to the apps that I use to read my labels on the spices I don't know. So for lemon juice, it comes out pretty slowly. Sometimes I can actually hear how much is coming out and sometimes I can see it. It just depends on the environment that I'm in or what I'm squeezing it onto. But because it comes out slowly, I don't necessarily have to worry about how much is coming out. So I'm just gonna start to squirt. And I can actually hear it as it's squirting out. And the good thing about making this in a Pyrex with an airtight lid is that I don't have to worry about spreading it out evenly because I'll be able to shake it at the end and get it all evenly spread. So I think that should be good for my lemon juice. And if after tasting it, I realize I need more, I'll just add a little more. 
As for olive oil, this is from Trader Joe's. So as I'm pouring, I can see the clear liquid coming out because it's against a high contrast area. I'm gonna pour a decent amount. And if you have less eyesight than I do, you can always use a measuring cup to measure out how much olive oil you would like based on your preference. For the crushed mint, I personally like a lot of mint in this dish. It keeps it tasting fresh. I like to pour my spice into my hand first. That way I know exactly how much is coming out and then pour it onto whatever I'm trying to season. So I'll do that now. And then I kind of feel it by closing my fist. I can feel how much is in it. And I'm gonna actually use a little more. For salt and pepper, I tend to find feta salty itself, so I'm not gonna use a whole lot of salt. I know based on how many turns I give the grinder, how much is coming out. That's just based on having this specific shaker for a while. I'm gonna be a little more generous with the pepper because I prefer a lot of black pepper. a little more lemon juice just because of the amount of pepper I used. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'm going to get my lid, give it a good shake, and see if there's anything else I would like to add. We got a lot of these Pyrex sets as wedding gifts, but I will link them down below for you to purchase if you'd like. So I'm gonna shake this pretty well and then give it a taste. So I think that smells really good. I think it looks really pretty. I'm going to give it a try. That is actually pretty much how I like it. So I'm going to seal this back up. All right, so I'm going to put this in the fridge to soak in the dressing and then we'll move on to the chickpeas. So like many other canned fruits, vegetables, beans, chickpeas come pre-cooked. It's just very important that you rinse them before frying them. So I have my strainer that I'm going to place in the sink. Luckily this can has a little pull tab so I don't have to worry about using the can opener. And then I'm gonna feel for where my strainer is and just pour them in. All right, so those are draining and I'm going to give them a good thorough wash. Okay, so while the water is draining off of these, I'm going to get my frying pan started. So for this recipe, I'm using a smaller pan just because that suits me better. So I'm using an eight inch frying pan. I'm going to start by heating up a little olive oil and some coriander and parsley before putting my chickpeas in the pan. And I have my stove knobs memorized so I know how far I need to turn each knob in order to get my desired temperature. only 
going to let my spices and oil heat up for a little bit before I put my chickpeas in just because that makes me feel a little better and the oil is not going to be as hot if it splatters. So because I chose a smaller pan to fry these in, I am going to do them in two batches just because that will keep the pan from overflowing and allow me to manage it a little better. All right, friends, so here is the finished product minus the feta cheese because I realized we ran out, so I'll have to go get some. But here is everything else. I personally think it looks very delicious, very colorful, very healthy, and nice and fresh. So I'm going to go enjoy some of this, and I will see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.